Okay, so from now on, um, we will talk about a bit of a different topic um, other than the statistics. And you'll be glad to know that um, there is no more weekly um, data analysis task from week 9 and week 10. So um, we will talk about the epidemiology, which is a study of what befalls a population. So epidemiology, the word has actually Greek root, and epi is, um, you know, uh, meaning on or upon, and demos, the demi, the demos mean people, and logos means the study of. So um, the formal definition of epidemiology is a branch of clinical research of health related states or events in specified populations with goals of determining uh, uh, determining the distribution of diseases or health related conditions or behaviors as well as determinants and the application of this study to control health problems so let's just take a look at a brief history of um, the health-related events. So the epidemiology, uh, until early 20th century, it was mainly a study dealing with infectious diseases. Um, but then in kind of a mid-20th century, uh, the epidemiology was expanded to um, study chronic diseases um, such as cancer or occupational and environmental health issues. And also um, the epidemiology uh, start to include behaviors related to a health and well-being such as um, the amount of exercise uh, and so on. So as a brief history of deadly infectious diseases, um, the Black Death, um, also known as the plague is probably the deadliest pandemic recorded in human history, even though there's no exact record of, you know, um, uh, the death toll. So um, what's um, shown here is the, uh, the flea, the human flea is um, on top here. So that is the human flea. And then, you know, this human flea, uh, prefers to bite people and derives where they don't bathe or wash their clothes. On the other hand, this a rat flea um, prefers to bite rats but will dine on human blood if people are around. So these are actually the, uh, the factors. Um, this, these uh, both species can carry the plague basically. Unfortunately, however, um, people thought. Uh, that it is the bad air that carries the disease instead of these ticks, I mean, the, the fleas. Um, so that's why the plague doctor, um, so this uh, depicted in this uh, picture, wore a grotesque looking costume. So these doctors were equipped with waxed fabric overcoat and a mask with glass eye openings and a big like nose right and this part uh this this nose is typically filled with uh, herbs straw and spices um hoping that you know they are protected from this bad air so uh, these plague doctors would also carry a cane right to examine and direct patients without having to um touch them right so that was like a 14th, uh, 14th century, and there was kind of a, a multiple uh, recurrence of Black Death and killing millions of millions of people. So right after the uh, First World War is over, um, there came Spanish flu pan uh, pandemic, which killed more than 50 million people worldwide. So this was more than the number of people killed during the First World War. And um, it was very powerful. So people fell ill in the morning and died by nightfall. 
Also, um, it was quite unusual in that it killed mostly young adults whose age is in their like 20s or 30s. Normally, um, you know, flu is fatal to vulnerable individuals such as infants or like a very old um, people or patients whose immune systems are already compromised by other illnesses. Uh, which uh, was the case um, with the current and ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. So as I'm speaking, um, the death toll now has reached uh, 1.34 million worldwide and counting. So this graph is taken from the World Matter site, providing worldwide statistics on COVID-19 in almost real time. So the graph is showing the daily number of people died of COVID-19 in UK. And it looks like we're entering into the second wave of um, infection. So we had a first peak around um, April here, right? So, and then that's um, when we had a, like a nationwide lockdown. So the death um, sharply decreased uh, until October or September, and then now the curve is on the rise again. So um, this diagram shows the branch of the epidemiological research designs categorized based on the role of the investigator, then further um, by the purpose of the study. So an epidemiological research can be dichotomized into either um, observational or experimental, depending upon the role of the investigator in manipulating the exposure of interest, which is the presumed cause of an outcome or something that is assumed to be related with the outcome. So in an observational study, the investigator do not have the direct control over the exposure of interest. In this case, the exposure to the risk factors um, is already established in the past. On the other hand, the investigator has direct control over the exposure of interest and actively manipulating the exposure in the research with experimental design. So because of the ethical issues, any study involves human, Experimental manipulation is only allowed for the beneficial exposure, whereas observational study can be useful when study the harmful exposure. And depending upon the goal of the study, the purpose of the study, an epidemiological research is considered descriptive uh, when the main purpose of the study is to describe the pattern and frequency of diseases in populations by time, place, and person. In many cases, uh, descriptive studies are used to generate further hypotheses about the reasons behind the certain health outcomes or uh, conducted for health planning, which are usually tested further in the analytic um, study design based on the descriptive data collected and the hallmark feature of uh, analytics study design is a valid comparison group. So um, the common goal of both epidemiolog uh, epidemiologists and clinicians is to control diseases. However, they are different um, in how they view the patient. So um, the clinician's patient is the individual, whereas the epidemiologist, uh, epidemiologist uh, patient is the community or group of patients. So from this, the clinician and the epidemiologist have different responsibilities when faced with a person with illness. So for example, when a patient with, say, you know, diarrhea, diarrhea uh, walks in to the clinic, then both um, clinician and the epidemiologist are interested in establishing the correct diagnosis. However, um, while the clinician usually focuses on treating and caring for the individual, 
the epidemiologist focuses on identifying the exposure or source that caused the illness and the number of other people who may have been similarly exposed um, or the potential for further spread in the community um, or the interventions to prevent additional cases or recurrences. So epidemiology concerns with um, the distribution of diseases or conditions by looking at how frequently they appear and how the occurrence change over time, place, and person. So these two, both frequency and pattern of disease are referred to the magnitude of disease occurrence, which is basically the descriptive statistics of epidemiological research. Um, there are some specific terms to describe the different levels of disease occurrence. So um, the endemic level of disease is basically the baseline occurrence, which is the habitual presence of a disease within a given uh, geographical area. So the disease uh, may occur indefinitely at this level. And so um, this habitual presence of a disease within a given area is known as endemic level of a disease. And then when the magnitude of disease in a community rises above this expected level, then we say that there is an outbreak, which is the sudden increase of the disease affecting significantly large number of people within the same area beyond endemic level. And when the disease further spreads to several countries or continents, then the disease is um, pandemic state, uh, which is basically the worldwide epidemic. Um, that's what we're experiencing um, currently. And finally, the last term, syndemic, does not exactly refer to the level of outbreak, but it refers to the interaction of two or more diseases in a population, typically exac exacerbate uh, the situation. So a working assumption of epidemiology is that disease or illness does not occur without a reason. So the potential reasons behind the disease is commonly called risk factors in epidemiology, which are thought to be the causes or other variables that influence the occurrence of disease and other health-related uh, related events. So in fact, um, there's a rarely a single risk factor or determinant that is 100% responsible for a disease to occur. Quite the contrary, um, disease occurrence is mostly the result of a probabilistic interplay between the multiple risk factors. So some members of the population are more prone to a disease than other members because the risk, risk factors or the determinants of the disease may not distribute it equally in the population. In this sense, uh, risk factors are mostly correlational to disease occurrence because no single risk factor is sufficient to cause a disease. So, um, according to this idea, um, a disease occurs only when the right accumulation of a multiple, multiple risk factors or determinants exist in an individual at the right time. So, in search of the risk factors, uh, analytic approach is used to provide why and how of the disease occurrence. So, talking about the analytic side of ep uh, epidemiology, uh, John Snow, not the one from the Winterfell, uh, was always um, is always mentioned as the father of modern day epidemiology. So in the um, mid 19th century, Soho, um, you know, down in London, suffered from serious sanitary problems uh, because of large influx of people with no proper sewage. So at the time, um, many Londoners received their water from hand pump, um, the wells that were located throughout the city. 
obviously um, shared water supply uh, you know, became quickly contaminated from over on cesspools and filth. So there was a cholera outbreak in 1854, which killed over 120 people in three days. So a cholera is an infection of the small intestine caused by the bacterium called Fibrio cholerae. However, physicians, including John Snow and researchers at the time, did have much clue, um, and they were desperate to pinpoint the cause behind the disease. Um, at the time, the prevailing opinion was that the disease was spread by miasma, that's what it's called, um, meaning bad air. And they are the, the disease is spreading by person-to-person -person contact. However, John Snow actually had a different conjecture that it should be coming from water or food consumption instead of a bad air because the disease was always related to the intestinal problem as opposed to pulmonary problem. So from this, he was uh, credited as the first person to apply analytic approach to test hypothesis on the contaminated water source as a cause of the epidemic. So to test his hypothesis, he used a geographical analysis by plotting the number of deaths on a map of infected area to find out the main source. So um, this is a modern day reincarnation of Snow's spot map um, where the pumps are shown in blue and they're kind of small, but they're just scattered throughout uh, the city here, right? So that's uh, one pump on Broad Street. And there's one, there's another one here and there, right? So, um, and the red circles, right? Um, in different sizes represent the number of deaths at, at that location. So uh, the larger the circle, uh, the more the death. So, um, assuming that his assumption about the disease is right, uh, that the disease is coming from uh, the dirty water, water source, then we can figure that the nearest pump to the most depth will be the likely contaminated water source. And indeed, he was able to find that uh, the highest depth are clustered around the pump on Broad Street, which is this one, right? So we can see that... Um, so the uh, highest death can be found around this location, right? Um, so he suggested that the pump uh, be taken out of service by removing the handle. And uh, uh, as a result, the epidemic subsided. So um, he was able to confirm his theory of the spread of cholera by dirty water. And this is spatial um, analysis you know, plotting points on a map and looking for a relationship has become uh, famous and it is often considered to be the first epidemiological analysis of disease. So to uh, commemorate his achievement, a replica of the pump without a handle stands in front of the pub that bears his name on Broad Street of Soho area. You can see that his picture. Um, you know, hanging uh, next to the wall of the John Snow Bar. So then how does uh, Snow's work related to public health? Um, so here are his uh, four key methods um, still used in epidemiological studies today. So Snow was convinced that there was an association between the contaminated water source and the cholera epidemic. So he first hypothesized, um, uh, you know, what actually what's uh, what's actually behind uh, the outbreak, and then he collected data. So he collected information on the location of death from cholera and people's water sources, and then he confirmed um, the association. Right. So he identified that there was a link between water source and um, death from cholera and then finally he actually actioned upon his uh, identification 
So he actioned on this uh, public health problem and he was able to stop the contaminated water being collected from the Broad Street pump. And finally, the epidemic ended and the association was confirmed. So this is basically what we do in the, hypo uh, the null hypothesis significance testing, right? So you first set up the hypothesis and then you can collect the data and you can you, you make a decision based on the data and you can um, do uh, so basically you can just act upon your decision knowing the uh, the consequence of making an error right so this is a pretty much um, kind of a brief history and the introduction of epidemiology and next time we will study a specific research design under each branch later.